to set the stage of what I like to cover today, I want to briefly mention the IGNA hypothesis that was put forward a few decades ago when it was observed that uh, when, uh, thanks to new knowledge in infectious disease, uh, we were able to effectively treat a variety of infections, including rheumatic fevers, epi, tuberculosis, mumps, and measles, um, that since the, the mid-60s went pretty much to zero and then followed two, three decades. During the same time, we observed a parallel increase of chronic inflammatory diseases, including autoimmune disease and neurodegenerative diseases that were not infected in calls. Bottom line, we were not dying fast infection disease anymore, but slowly off autoimmune diseases and other chronic inflammatory diseases. If we want to look at this in a pessimistic way, this was the consequence of the fact that we're changing our environment too fast for us to adapt. However, if we want to look at this phenomenon from the optimistic point of view, uh, this will imply that the fact that uh, we are genetically predisposed for a variety of conditions like autoimmune disease, neurodegenerative diseases, and, um, you know, uh, allergic and food allergy, like food allergy diseases, doesn't mean that necessarily we develop this condition. If we do or do not depend on our lifestyle and how we play our genetic card. So in other words, the fact that we are predisposed for the conditions doesn't mean that it's necessary we develop, you know, the disease. But if we do or do not, it really depends strongly on our lifestyle. That brought to a revisitation of the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases and chronic inflammatory disease in general. Indeed, besides genetic predisposition and exposure to environmental triggers that were considered necessary sufficient to develop these conditions, three more elements were added to the picture, namely increased gut permeability that allowed this interaction between gene and environment, a belligerent immune system that created chronic inflammation, and pertinent to this talk, a microbiome that was off balance. We also appreciated that these elements, they influence each other. And most importantly, the microbiome can epigenetically decide if, when, and how our genes can be expressed or repressed, so switching genetic predisposition to clinical actuality.